Okay. I think in the interest of time, I'll just explaining like the, I'll just start explaining the whereabouts and uh, what are we going to do through this um, session. So welcome back. I hope you had a nice cup of coffee or a good stretch and you are feeling a little bit re-energized. Uh, thank you again for joining for this discussion. Uh, we are going to be looking at uh, children and infectious diseases outbreak to a sociological framing and uh, how to improve the centrality of child protection in future infectious diseases outbreak. And I wanted to, sorry, to go to the next slide and for some reason it wasn't working, but it's now. So we would like to identify the changes that will be necessary so that the best interest of children are at the center of the continued response to COVID-19, as well as the future infectious diseases outbreak. Just a reminder for everyone, I think you're all familiar with the socio-ecological model. It's, um, it features in a lot of our documents and it's a lens that we should use to better inform our programming um, always and even more so uh, through infectious diseases outbreak. So we'll look at this in this particular session with a focus on family. So this is um, other groups will be focusing on the child layers and the community layers or the social cultural norms and community layers. We'll be looking particularly at the family, uh, at the family aspects. Uh, so in this discussion, we'll, uh, you will be sent to, to some breakout rooms, like the group is uh, not large, but we are um, slightly, slowly increasing. So in uh, the breakout rooms that Richard and I will be setting up for you in a minute, I would like you to consider in your discussion different types of family structures, including child uh, or youth added households, grandparents added households, maybe um, parents with disabilities households and adjustments that needs to be made um, in programming so that we respond to the needs of these uh, family structures. Uh, we would like you to think of the risk and protective factors within families and the adjustments that uh, needed uh, to be made to adapt to this uh, to, to adapt to these factors. You can also check the participant handout day three uh, background and the background paper for more information on this that. Uh, Laura and uh, Judy have kindly pulled together for this uh, day three discussion. So you will be sent to breakout rooms and similarly to what you have done in other sessions in different groups earlier, you will have a Google slide associated with uh, each of the group that we will set up. So look for your slide like with the number of your group. So if you are in room one, please choose Google slide number one. And uh, you will have 10 minutes to discuss what has been done well and what are the gaps in working with families to protect children during infectious diseases outbreaks? I will read again the, the question because I know when we go into breakout room, we tend to all forget like what was the question that uh, was asked, but it's showing on the Google slide as well. So what has been done well and what are the gaps in working with families to protect children during IDOs? If you're a French speaker, please put a far in uh, uh, your um, um, in your name, and I will ask Audrey to repeat this once again in French, so that we are able to send you to the correct uh, breakout room where you can speak in your own language. Si vous voulez, uh, si vous parlez français, que vous voulez être dans des petits groupes qui parlent uniquement français, faites comme moi, rajoutez les initiales. FR devant votre nom, comme ça Richard, notre producteur, sera en mesure de pouvoir vous attribuer la bonne salle. Merci. And uh, the Google slide um, link is now, should be showing in your chat box. Uh, Richard, if you can put us in breakout room, I'd say one English room and one French speaking room, that would be great. Please accept the invite that you receive to join the breakout rooms and 
your 10 minutes uh, for discussion will start now. Oh, welcome back. I hope the discussion was lively and productive. I see that there are uh, some thoughts shared on both slides. I will share my screen briefly just to go um, through the English inputs. And maybe Audrey, then you can give us a, a short synopsis of the, no? Anna will do it. Anna will do it, sounds great. <laughs> Just uh, two words, Anna, on what the discussion has been about. Don't worry, uh, don't go crazy about it. Um, I'm just going to share my screen with the inputs from our colleagues in the English speaking room. And um, I think they've gone a bit ahead like uh, in the steps, but that's great because they're just going to have more time to elaborate better during the next 10 minutes. So in terms of what has been done well, and uh, um, there have been quite some thinking about the availability of material, which I think was uh, described as quite prompt for both caregivers and children. Um, the development of um, remote guidance support modalities for families and um, using different channels of communication which were adapted to the context, uh, the availability and promotion of help, help lines. And I think the, here it was interesting to hear APSI perspective with Lucia with the psychosocial first aid line um, for um, caregivers as well. Or better said, not a dedicated helpline, but an helpline that also provided that support for caregivers. Um, in terms of gaps, um, um, I think if I read the discussion correctly, um, the quality outcomes of the support provided to families is not yet known. Yes, that makes sense. I mean, to an extent, we still have to see um, or evaluate some of the results that uh, we have achieved with responses through this infectious diseases outbreak. And, um, in terms of working with communities, maybe someone in the group, in, in the English speaking group can tell us a little bit about the point on exposed, which communities we already had a good level of engagement with, or better, I think I understand this. Um, so probably like it was easier to work like with the communities where we had already been quite well established as opposed to uh, where shaky relationships um, that certainly makes a lot of sense in a context where we have to reduce our presence and interaction with said communities. Um, so great, thanks very much for these inputs. Uh, um, and uh, I just, um, I'm gonna pass it over to Anna for a quick synopsis of the French uh, speaking discussion. Um, yes, Audrey. No, but before Anna starts, we have to say we, 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 we stayed only on slide number one. Yeah, which is perfect. It's okay. what, it's perfect. You were good. Okay, <laughs> you will have time to discuss more in the second slide, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Go ahead, Anna. Okay, um, bear with me, um, try to translate from French to English. <laughs> Okay, we have an interesting discussion on uh, uh, two different uh, um, way of uh, um, uh, what has been done well and what, uh, uh, what are the gaps. Uh, we were speaking about the importance to uh, do capacity building on the staff to use uh, uh, all uh, the new technology and digital tools uh, to uh, uh, do awareness campaign in the in the in the community, and uh, uh, the importance to have a focal point to do sensi sensibilization not only with the community but also with the other uh, with the other colle colleagues. Uh, uh, on uh, the measure, the social distancing, but also hygiene measure. Um, and uh, the important to have to do, uh, uh, to do advocacy, uh, to have uh, uh, this uh, focal point uh, uh, within uh, the community. 
avec, uh, with the, the uh, mobile phone that was needed to uh, keep going the, um, the case management when it comes to uh, child protection cases. Um, then there was uh, another point really important that they will be using uh, um, the uh, youth club. Uh, they were engaging in doing uh, posters and, uh, and comics about the, uh, car the current pandemic. Uh, these comics were used to uh, disseminate the information about uh, the hygiene measure or uh, the social distancing. Between what uh, has been a challenge uh, in the country was uh, uh, the fact that a lot of the lack of uh, basic material like soap and, uh, and the fact that when these, uh, pand the COVID pandemic started, there was an increase in prices uh, of these materials was very difficult uh, even for uh, uh, humanitarians to provide this material to the family and uh, more specifically to foster care family where they coming, uh, working uh, into the camps. And- uh, um, Great, thanks Anna, perfect. that sounds, that's, uh, that's perfect. That's that's perfect. That's perfect. That's, thank you very much, Anna. That's great just to keep us uh, uh, to time. Thanks for sharing. So what we'll do right now, I'll just show my screen again, like with the next question. So you will be sent uh, back to the same breakout rooms um, and uh, this time to discuss the second slide <laughs> on your Google Slides, um, Audrey. And the second question being, I'll just put it up um, so that everyone can see it properly is what are the priorities in working with families to protect children during the infectious diseases outbreak and why? So we would like that within your group, like you try and note, sorry, and note uh, your thoughts around this discussion on the second Google slide and more towards the end of the 10 minutes that be allocated to this discussion then rank your top three priorities on working with families to protect children during infectious diseases outbreaks um, and um, Richard will share the uh, sorry the Mentimeter slide the Mentimeter link is on the third slide but I'll join both groups so if you need any help like with this just to let me know uh, but yeah Richard you can um, set up the breakout rooms so that everyone can join. Has Great I will open the breakout rooms now and they'll be the same as before. Uh, welcome back. It looks like the English group is back. Can someone give me a sign from the French group being back in the room? I can not see them yet. Here we go. I see Audrey. Great. Uh, so I saw that you did your exercise and I think while there are not so many recommendations, I think, I think that the ones that we have are really um, key. So, Richard, do you mind sharing the slide or shall I do so with the Mentimeter results? Shall I do that? Uh, I can do that. So, if you just hold on. Yes, please, if you don't mind. Um, I think one of the main recommendations that came from the French speaking group is that uh, we have to strengthen the communication systems so that um, we provide the right information to parents and caregivers um, so that they're better prepared to uh, protect children and um, and you know, we actually, and this links well, like to working with communities as well, which is discussed in another room. Um, then there is a suggestion, I think, around strengthening community approaches so that we are able, I think, to work with the most vulnerable families uh, that perhaps might not be as visible for example, using faith leaders um, and other examples being of families who are separated and perhaps do not have access to cash support. 
uh, support to female added households and single parents, then I think there is this very vital uh, suggestion around mental health support provided to caregivers and perhaps uh, you know, explore more ways to actually uh, access caregivers through different channels, which is a discussion you were having also before, uh, Lucia and the English group. Um, strengthen the capacities and resources of caregivers in their roles. Uh, this is interesting as well. Uh, does anyone from the uh, English speaking group uh, want to articulate a little bit on this? Yeah, sorry, Elena, we were um, not so concise with the, you know, Mentimeter has the limit of the, um, but I think we, we, on this subject, we talked more about, you know, the practical supports, the caregivers, um, you know, if children are not going to school, they become educators at home, um, they become, yeah, all those kind of holistic, I mean, they're already the first responders anyway, um, but that kind of role and the responsibilities maybe increase and did we give enough practical support or did we give enough prioritization to uh, what families themselves need? And I think another it ties in another conversation we had, which was like, did we actually consult or uh, can we prioritize more talking with caregivers about their additional needs during IDOs so that we really hear it from them? As much as we hear from children what they need, we hear from caregivers what, you know, what, what is the package that you need instead of developing it without asking those questions. Thank you, Alia. That's a very valid point. I think um, child participation is important, uh, but also consulting with caregivers is uh, very important and make them um, actors, you know, active uh, respondents, like, you know, in, in our projects as well, active players. Sorry, I was looking for the English word. That's great, everyone. So, what we can do, you are now allowed to take a break for 10 minutes, but please don't shut your camera just yet. Like, um, stay in this room, don't leave, don't click the red button, just uh, mute yourself and uh, um, close your video. Um, have a 10 minutes break, be back at 1640 Central European time, so in 10 minutes from now, and uh, we resume our conversation for uh, the last uh, breakout session. Okay, thank you everyone. Yes, Audrey, you wanna say that in French? Yes, please. Yes, thanks. Um, donc, on va faire une coupure pendant 10 minutes. Restez ici. Vous mettez juste votre micro et votre caméra uh, sur uh, off. Uh, Jonas, qui vient de nous rejoindre, je vais vous expliquer comment changer votre nom pour mettre FR devant. Comme ça, vous allez être dans les groupes en français. Prenez 10 minutes. On se retrouve à 4h40, heure européenne, dans 10 minutes. Merci. Merci à tous. So as Richard was mentioning, this is the last group work of the day. So welcome again to this. Um, we'll be looking at something different right now. So what we have done through these sessions is that we have looked at what has worked well in uh, working with families, what have been the gaps, and you have also discussed what recommendations and priorities you were thinking of when thinking of families specifically. Now, we would like you to think a bit more broadly than that and uh, think creatively, collaboratively, and of course, cross-sectorally. And we would like to discuss two questions. And I'll give you the two questions straight away so that you can chat through uh, both of them like uh, during uh, the next uh, few minutes. Um, the first question is, how do we ensure that we do no harm to children during infectious diseases outbreak in our various roles? So you don't have to imagine uh, to be in the field or somewhere else, like just imagine yourself as within your role at the moment. And the second question is, how are we held accountable for protecting children during infectious diseases outbreak? Similar to what we have done um, earlier, like we will, Richard will facilitate you joining like the breakout rooms. We will have a French and an English speaking um, 
breakout rooms and I think a few more people has joined these groups and you will have um, slides to be able to um, to other slides with this session maybe not uh, let me double check with this um, yeah. Yes, there are slides yes, for this session. So <laughs> I was just first. Yeah. Thanks, Richard. Sorry, Richard has already shared the link to this last uh, um, group work. And for a second, like I thought there were no slides. So I apologize for that. So if you can note the uh, answers to question number one in your first one, in, in your first slide, and the question number two in your second slide. And as before, please look at the. Um, room number you are in to be able to choose the slides that you'll be using. You will have a bit of time to discussing this because we have been quite time efficient. So I think we'll have 15 minutes to be a bit more than 50, 20 minutes actually to be able to um, go through all of this. So take your time and we will do a Mentimeter on this, but when you're back in plenary with me so that you are all able to fill it at the same time. Um, does that sound okay for everyone? And um, Audrey, do you wanna do the French <laughs> description briefly? I have lost Audrey. Um, Audrey, are you still with us? No, I can't see Audrey at oh. the moment. Oh, Et alors, je vais, okay. ouvrir les, je vais ouvrir les, les salles de réunion, les breakout rooms. Et uh, s'il vous plaît, appuyez ou cliquez, <laughs> appuyez sur le bouton uh, pour, pour, pour y aller. OK. Pour les salles. Yes, I just saw that Audrey had to leave, but no worries. Yes, like for those of you that, uh, for, um, yeah, as, as, um, as um, Richard said, like French speaking can join the room, like Richard will do everything. So you'll be able to uh, join the room and I will be uh, joining the breakout to help you with the question in case there are any clarifications needed. So Richard, if you wanna open the rooms, we can already, um, and start with the group work. And welcome back everyone. Thank you um, for the discussion. I hope it was interesting. I heard uh, definitely some uh, uh, interesting conversation. Um, in the last part of this exercise, what we kindly ask you to do is in your own personal capacity to share um, your top two priority actions to protect the children during future waves of COVID-19 or other infectious diseases outbreak through a Mentimeter link that I'm gonna, um, that, um, sorry, um, Richard, could you please share the link to the Mentimeter in the chat box so that everyone has it. So you can access the Mentimeter and I'll just leave it as a silent discussion while I'll just leave you to, sorry, let me just um, recap on my thoughts. If you can write in your own personal capacity your top two priority around protecting children during COVID-19 through the Mentimeter link that uh, Richard has shared, I will just go quickly through the um, inputs that you've made like in the slides just to show uh, each of the groups like what your uh, discussions have been about. So I'll just bear with me a second, I'll share my screen, but please start inputting your ideas Yes, in the in, in the Mentimeter, and uh, um, um, Richard will notify when things are gonna start uh, coming up. Um, so, if you just give me a second. Pour les, pour les amis en français dans la, Thanks, Audrey. Dans le chat box, vous avez un lien vers Mentimeter. Si vous cliquez dessus, vous allez peut-être être, être euh, obligé de rentrer le code qui est 29201001. Euh, sinon, moi, la page s'est ouverte directement et là, vous avez une question. Quelles sont les deux top priorités en termes d'action pour protéger les enfants pendant les futures vagues de COVID-19 hein, ou potentiellement les épidémies de maladies infectieuses selon votre perspective 
Donc, vous, avez une, vous pouvez rentrer votre réponse et cliquer « Submit ». Et comme ça, on aura votre perspective sur la question. Merci. Thank you, Audrey. Uh, that's great. And I see that there are already ideas coming through. So maybe we just um, want to discuss this quickly. Um, but please uh, don't think that your work on the slide is not going to be taken in consideration. It's certainly valuable to all of us. Um, um, Richard, can you bring me back to the results from the Mentimeter? Just uh, as I'll just um, just talk them through as they're coming in. So I can see that there is someone including advocacy uh, for governments to put in place uh, a child protection system which works and that can mobilize through through an appropriate level of funding, I guess. Um, consider the different needs of children and not only how to get how to not get infected by the virus. So uh, the use of an holistic approach here is suggested. Talk more with caregivers about their needs and the support that they would like to have prioritized then. Staff capacity building and child-friendly approaches, methods, languages, focus also on non-protection staff like health staff, community volunteers, totally very important. Meaningful participation in every phase, starting now with preparation. Finding ways to listen to children's priorities and integrate them into programming. Build strong connections with community organizations and network and build their capacity so partnership will work well in future waves of infectious diseases outbreak. Totally reasonable, especially like, you know, with all this talk about localization. And Richard, if you can scroll down a little bit, um, I can see the rest of the answer. That would be great. Full cross, uh, just a teeny bit up, if you don't mind. Thanks, that's fantastic. The full cross-sectoral collaboration to include child protection from the beginning. It's, it's the never ending story, that one, but uh, totally is super important, even in this context. Adapting feedback mechanism in the context of ideals to ensure ch children and community have access to, pro to provide feedback. So that's valuable. Support caregivers in dealing with their children. <laughs> yes. Um, code of conduct for community communities and staff. For recovery phases, continuing the education access for all children is essential. And the functional communication system um, is sectoral collaboration between different sectors to provide an holistic response to children's needs and concerns. Uh, for the French colleagues, if you want to fill this in in French, I think that's also fine. Uh, I see there is another one coming in and it's child-friendly and child-sensitive monitoring system in place and functional. Yeah, ideally. Please continue to list the top two priority actions that you would like to see and I will be able to feature them when we go back to plenary and, um, and if we are, if we have a, main, a, a recap discussion on this or else they will be used like uh, to document uh, all of um, the lessons learned that are coming from uh, this annual meeting. Um, unless there are any questions then I would suggest uh, you can all take a break by leaving this room this time because you will have to go back to plenary uh, when you get back so it's um, 5.20 Central European time for me, uh, so I would like to kindly ask you all to be back in the plenary room at 5.30, so in 10 minutes from now. Audrey, if you want to give the same info in French, thank you. Of course, my pleasure. So, um, donc, pour, les, pour, pour nos amis francophones, nous allons arrêter la session ici. Vous êtes invité à, à quitter cette pièce. Sur le lien Kiko uh, Chat, vous allez voir le lien pour la session en plénarie. 
que nous, et donc euh, Penari et Wrap Up, on vous invite à cliquer dessus. Mais comme nous avons fini un peu en avance, il est donc 5h20 heure européenne et nous reprenons à 5h30 heure européenne. Donc vous avez le temps d'aller vous détendre les jambes, boire un verre d'eau et nous rejoindre en plénarie. Si vous avez des questions, n'hésitez pas. Merci.